Walk away from him. Walk away slowly. Go, baby. Run. I'm trying. He's not happy with us. Hi, I'm Tate. And I'm Danny. This is our story. In 2015, we quit our jobs and embarked on a five year world adventure. We sailed from New Orleans to Panama, lived in exotic locations, swam with sharks, and ate a ton of fish. But we are just getting started. In 2016, we put our boat Sundowner on the hard and started a new adventure in our Class A RV. Join us as we explore North America. We have no hard plans and no idea where we'll end up. What a way to live. Tate has a knack for finding us in the construction zones. It's been way too long without any road work. This is like the third time that we've had to go onto the other side of an interstate. Ooh. Wall drug. Wall drug. We must stop at wall drug. We've literally been seeing signs for wall drug for the past 300 miles. This road is insanely bumpy. It is like a washboard. Recreational vehicle accessibility is unknown. You would have never thought that out of the miles and miles of flat South Dakotan plains that giant rocks and deep grassy valleys would emerge. These were the badlands I had heard so much about, the land where wild bison roam free. We headed down a 15 mile road of dirt and washboard gravel. It was so bumpy, I really thought the RV was going to shake itself to death. Sage Creek Campground, you can stay for free 14 days, is provided by the National Park Service. After this trip, we have to really come check out the motorcycle, make sure it's okay. Look at it. It's dusty, huh? Look at that. Ooh, let me see. Oh my gosh. But it's still there. Things are quite cold here. We've got a down blanket underneath a wool blanket underneath a fleece blanket. And we also have a water bottle. The life of no hookups. With our arrival came freezing temperatures. There are brave souls that actually camp here in tents. Keeps you warm even when it's cold. <laughs> Tate likes to stay outside in all kinds of conditions. So he set himself up a little chair and our fashy water bottle from Germany that we bought for the cold winter on the boat has come in so handy. Our second day in the Badlands, there's snow on the hilltops. The poor bison, I know they're used to this, but they must be really cold over there. But it's beautiful here, even with it snowing. I know, I wish we could just sit outside. Yeah, you can come out here. I don't have a caribou coat like you. <laughs> Well, you should have planned ahead. Oh. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I don't like to go gallivanting in the snow, ice, and wind. Tate was the only one brave enough and warm enough to check things out. Once again, our landscape was overtaken by the snowy northern climate. They call it spring here. I went outside earlier, and it's raining and sleeting and snowing, and <laughs> things got a little wet. Danny makes fun of me because I always have to go outside, but I just like being outdoors. And uh, since everything got so wet, my socks are soaked. So since we don't have a dryer and it's like negative 10 degrees, this is how we dry clothes that have to be dried. There's the heater, there's a boot, and there are my socks. And I don't know if you can see this, but they're steaming right now. <laughs> Cooking the socks. We waited out the cold and eventually the sun did come back. What is on your face? Sunglasses. What is that? Some strange thing is taking over your face tape. It's sunny, finally, after seven days. The ice age has ended. Are you getting sunburnt? No, not yet. You need some sunscreen? Look, there it is. You enjoying that warm weather? Finally, yes. Yeah, it's nice today. Now it's beautiful, oh my gosh. It's about 70 degrees and we're hiking, getting pretty warm, but we can take uh, some clothes off and not get overheated. The weather is perfect. I can't imagine it being any better here in the Badlands. We had to venture to the hilltops to get internet. Well, that's gonna take a while. I guess I need to find better signal. 
Living in an RV is not nearly as confining as living in a sailboat, but it's still very confining, especially when compared to a house. For example, Tate and I have been in the Badlands National Park for four days now, and it was snowing the past two days. And he likes to go outside in all kinds of weather, but I don't. <laughs> I don't really like the cold too much. It just chills me to the bone. So you have to find things to do inside, and we really got good at this when we were living on the boat. Um, I do things like reading, I work out, I try to work out about an hour every day. And Tate and I also play games. We play cards, Bananagrams, Scrabble, chess. Tate essentially beats me every single game at chess. I get tired of playing him, but he has weaseled his way in. He just brought the chessboard right here and... I've brought Tate to women before and he really liked it. It's a lager. It's our fifth day here and we are finally eating all of our Wisconsin cheese. As you can see my hair looks a little crazy. I haven't washed it in a week. I brush it and I keep it like wrapped up when I sleep with a silk thing around it. But when you're on water um, conservation, I don't have enough water to like wash my hair. So just kind of leave it like it is. Some people say it's really good for it. You might think that all this smoke is because the RV is on fire. But actually, it's just me and my recent discovery of Spam. If you cook it where it's like black, it tastes like bacon. Something we encountered a lot on uh, on the boat is that things get cluttered really easily because it's such a small space and it's aggravating to like put things in the cabinet, take things out, put things in, take things out. So I'm going to give you a little uh, sneak preview of what <laughs> it actually looks like after 10 days of being docked somewhere. Look at this table, there's like no room. <laughs> two days so tonight it's pizza I have to clean this stuff up first though because I can't operate when there's such a mess now this is more like it what you think baby it's time. over eons shifting continental plates and climate changes created the landscape of the Badlands it is comprised of fossil rich rocks and wide stretching prairies our campsite was nestled next to a river in a valley of green rolling hills you can see rocks in the mountainside where the erosion has revealed them and uh, it's like a layer. Believe it or not, this area has supported humans for more than 11,000 years, starting with ancient woolly mammoth hunters and followed by various tribes of American Indians. These are the yellow mounds of the Badlands. I haven't read the little plaque yet to know what created them, but they're really pretty. These layered rocks are some of the coolest things I've ever seen. The rock formations here in the Badlands are really neat. They look very solid like it's stone, but they're not. They're like clay almost, very porous. So many fossils have been found here that archaeologists have nicknamed it the Playground of the Dinosaurs. The Badlands National Park is pretty cool because you can drive around the whole thing. We are somewhere here. We're gonna drive this way to go look at the rocks today. How does it feel to get the bike off the trailer? It feels good. I'm ready to go see the Badlands. It's been like a week. Yeah, let's do it. Yay! Hopefully it doesn't rain on us. We're going to uh, the visitor center. It's like a 30 plus mile drive from here. So it was a lot further than we thought and good thing we filled up gas cans before we left because I need to gas the motorcycle up to make it there. So Tate, you ready to ram the bighorn sheep? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> the loop through Badlands National Park is considered one of the best scenic drives in America. I wasn't gonna pass this one up. Roads like this, which wind and swoop through breathtaking scenery, are a serious reason we first bought our motorcycle, and this road did not disappoint. It was a ride I will always remember for varied twists, swoops, and straightaways, climbs and dives, mountains mixed with prairies, and of course, a truly majestic background. The rain finally caught up with us, huh babe? Yeah, we made it just in time. <laughs> We've been riding this whole time, and this is the first time we got caught in a little bit of rain. I'm 
really surprised that things such as delicate flowers can grow here, but they do, along with 60 species of grass, like the big blue stem, cord grass, blue grandma, and buffalo grass. Who need a cactus grew up here in South Dakota? Wow, look at all the sagebrush. This is called sagebrush campground uh, for a reason. It's like pretty thick. And these stunted little trees whose roots don't reach the groundwaters. Then there's the bison. Herds among herds call these plains home and Tate couldn't wait to get a closer look. Notice the wooden barrier he placed in between him and the bison. Good thinking there, Tate. Other times in our adventures I was less precautious. This close-up shot was taken right before we were charged. They weren't shy roaming the campsite, and we were happy we weren't in a tent. Tate had to move the motorcycle right in front of the RV because we're a little worried that the bison that are shedding their, their uh, winter coats are going to come rub on it because they rub on everything. <laughs> I think a lot of these paths are actually game trails. You can see the bison hooves. They must travel here. I'm happy our park service allows these wild creatures to flourish here, but as majestic as they are by the river's edge, I can't help but think of a delicious buffalo burger. Oh, and being charged. See how Danny places the river between herself and the bison? She did this throughout the rest of the trip after being charged. Even when the weather was cold, we ventured out to hike the surrounding hills. You really have to watch where you walk around here. There's bison droppings everywhere. It's like a cow field, like a wild cow field. We had the area all to ourselves and I pretended we were the original explorers and I imagined their thoughts as they entered these strange lands. We hiked across prairie dog fields and to the tops of muddy hills. So it's really muddy. Check out my boots. It's clay. It just builds up and sticks more and more to you the further you go. Wow, look at the back. <laughs> We're going to have some issues. I saw these things sticking up from the top of a mountain and they look like prairie dogs or something. So I hiked up here and upon further inspection they're actually traveler stones of people who have hiked up here. You can see the campgrounds just right down there. There, we've done our duty. We have our Traveler's Mountain, although it's quite windy up here and I'm not sure how long it will last. Finally, the weather is good enough to go hiking when it's not overcast and gray and snowing and awful. We didn't take all those sunny days for granted. We trekked for hours each day all around the prairie. The hills were less muddy and eventually we took the motorcycle to the rocky side of the park. Danny and I are setting off on the Notch Trail, which was recommended to us by a viewer on YouTube. It's not recommended for people who are afraid of heights. Well, this landscape was quite a bit different from the campsite. Check out this giant ladder. It brings you clear up the side of the rock face. Walking through here, I really think John Wayne should come up on a horse. We should be like building a fire. Wah, wah, wah. We looked for rattlesnakes to no avail. It felt so great to walk around without mountains of clothes on, letting our pale skin feel the sunshine. It became apparent early on that birds are a major part of life here. Have you found out what they are yet, Danny? Well, I think one of them is the western meadowlark. There's another one and I can't find it. I don't know what it is. I have to keep looking. I have looked for this bird for two hours in this book. I think maybe like fish, I'll get used to these birds after a while if I keep looking at it. Ah yes, my mysterious white winged bird. My bird watching mom helped me identify it as a magpie. There were high flying hawks hunting alongside the riverbanks. There were also birds in fights. This is not a zoo, but rather the great wide open wild. Mr. Eagle just isn't going to put up with trespassers. There were also wild turkeys on the flat grassy hilltops. I ventured out at dusk and followed the call of the male gobbler, where I spotted his harem of seven females. <laughs> Thank you.
But truthfully, I was on the hunt for a rarer bird, the golden eagle. These are not them, but rather just stupid turkey buzzards. There are golden eagles that live over there. I've seen them many times and we've been on an eagle scouting watch. This is our last day in the Badlands and we've been scouting eagles like the rescuers down under. <laughs> I think I got some. We'll have to see. Hard suckers to find, Lord. They're up there. I know they are. I did eventually get video and pictures of this incredible animal However far away and fast they always seem to fly. This is an immature one noted by the white band on its tail, while here is an adult with its golden neck patch that gives it its name. Watching these huge predators in action was definitely a highlight of my life. Behold the peaceful bison. Though he is not a predator, he is still quite capable of acts of aggression. Whether it be to assert his dominance as the alpha bull of the herd, or to protect himself from would-be predators, the bison is not shy about butting heads, and his aggression may be necessary, for the Badlands are still filled with predators of all kinds. And though these coyotes pose little threat to an adult bison, other denizens of the prairie lands must take care. These rabbits, for instance, have learned to take cover under a human-built boardwalk, shielding themselves from coyotes and birds of prey. Prairie dogs, on the other hand, have developed an alert system by which they warn each other of danger. And why not? Mother knows best she must protect her young pups. The fluffy-assed antelope, on the other hand, is better able to protect himself and so instead signals his readiness to charge, or perhaps his willingness to mate with our motorcycle. His cousin, the bighorn sheep, prefers safety in numbers to protect their young from would-be predators. And here we have the idiot turkey, though in dire danger he continues to signal to nearby hens. This of course doesn't go unnoticed. Turkey vultures sweep throughout the badlands in search of prey. But not being idiots themselves, they shield their young by building nests in remote places. Other birds of prey also scour the badlands, such as the soaring hawk and the majestic hovering golden eagle. From the lowliest ground-bound creature to those that soar high above, the badlands is truly alive. Lots of more people here now. The weather's turned nice. We spent 12 days exploring this beautiful park before we headed on down the road. What state are we going to grace our presence with next, Tate? It's going to be Montana. So if you are in that state and want to meet us, get in touch. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and click the subscribe button below. Also, consider becoming a patron. Patrons, thank you so much. Your help is so much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.